Hello friends, and welcome to a look at using the plastic tool as a simplified way to create cutout animation. So last week I traced a drawing of Fry from Futurama to use as a base for animating him to help keep consistency with the character. And then I showed two ways that you can add life and animation to him. And that's by animating smaller parts of the drawing, and in my case that's the eyes and mouth. But obviously you can animate any individual part of the character, whether it be the arms, legs, body or whatever. And then also by using the plastic tool to move the overall character a little so he's not so static. And the outcome is really nice. But the plastic tool can only animate the drawing that you have. So for instance for this drawing the arm is drawn in front of the body so you can't move it outside of the body. And of course you can draw the arm on a separate column and connect it to this level as I've shown in other videos. And you can see these in my playlist called Cutout Animation. And I showed a simple version using BB-8 with just two bones and also a more complicated one using a skeleton. But before you know it, the more complicated you make it, you'll have so many columns it can get quite unwieldy. With one column for the body, one for each leg, one for each arm, then there's the head and the face pieces. And if you want more subtle movement, you might add a plastic tool mesh to each of these. So you can easily get more than a dozen columns for one character which just gets crazy after a while. And for a lot of animation, you don't need to animate each of these pieces, so you don't necessarily need to build a full body skeleton. And I can't remember who said it, but in a tutorial I watched, an animator said that for cutout animation, there isn't one rig to rule them all. So you're likely going to create a different rig depending on the situation that you're using the character in. So only rig the parts of the character that you actually want to move. And for some animation, that means no rig at all. However, you can use the plastic tool as a kind of rig. So today, I'd like to show that alternative. So as I said, obviously you can't see behind the arm to see the body. So what we need to do to be able to use the plastic tool in a single column is to have the arm drawn, not in front of the body. And the way to do that is just to draw it to the side. So what I'm doing here is I'm erasing the arm on this drawing. So I'm drawing in the jacket and trousers as I imagine they are behind the arm. Then once that was done I drew the arm to one side. Then I copy and pasted that to each of the rest of the drawings in the level. Now ordinarily if you knew you wanted to do this from the start you just draw the arm separate from the body and then as you duplicated the drawing to make amendments to the face, it would already have the separated arm in place. And it's important to have the separated arm in the same place on each drawing, so that when we create the mesh in the next stage, it covers the arm on each drawing so you don't see a change between the movement of the arm as you change from drawing to drawing. So the next stage is to add a plastic tool mesh. So we go to drawing number one, go to the plastic tool and hit create mesh. And as I did previously, I added a slight margin to cover the change in the mouth shapes to make sure they're contained within the mesh, and then hit apply. And because we already had a mesh previously, it's asked what we want to do if we want to replace that mesh or create a new one. And I'm happy to delete the old mesh level entirely, so I'll just hit apply. Okay, so there's the mesh over the drawing. And you'll notice that although the two pieces of fry are separate on screen, anywhere where there's ink in the drawing has a mesh drawn around it. So we simply extend the mesh to the end of the animation and then we'll create the skeleton. So we change the mode to build skeleton, we'll zoom out and now build the skeleton similar to last time. So starting at the feet to approximately the waist to the neck, top of the head. And then from any other node, I'll go from the root, it doesn't really matter. You then go to the shoulder, elbow, wrist and hand and as before I'll paint rigid on the legs so they don't move as I animate. Being careful not to paint rigid over the hand. And then change to animate mode and check that that all works. So we can lean backwards and forwards and his head goes backwards and forwards. And the arm bends at the elbow and can rotate. Okay, so as we did before, you right click on any joint node and choose set global rest key and that places all of the nodes back to their original start positions. 
But what we need is a new start position so the arm is in the correct place. So we need to move the top of the arm to the shoulder of the body. And because we've got the tick box ticked that says keep distance, we can only move in an arc around the point where it's joined, which is actually quite close, but it's not quite right. So untick keep distance and then drag that to the shoulder. If we zoom in and then place it exactly where we want it. That's fine. And then tick keep distance again to ensure we don't stretch any other parts of the body. So the animation we want is that as Fry looks towards us, he's made some movement. So a few frames before, we'll add a global key to keep him in this position. So during the first, whatever that is, dozen or so frames, he stays still. And then leading up to frame two in these frames, I want him to lean backwards a little bit, look up a little bit, and then I want the arm to come forward. So simply rotate the arm forward, hand at the elbow, bring the hand down a little bit. So between those few frames, the arm comes forward at the same time. So one thing I've noticed is that the arm moves slightly away from the shoulder as the character leans back. Just there. And that's because the shoulder bone, or joint, is connected to the heel. Now I shouldn't really have done that. To get away around this, what I should have done, if I go back to build skeleton, is I should have put a joint from anywhere on here to near the shoulder on the body, and then from the shoulder to the shoulder joint of the arm. And then as this point on the body moves left and right or stretches up and down, the arm joint will stay the same distance away, so will stay connected, visually connected to the body. So if I actually make that change now, by clicking on and deleting each of the joints here, So there we go, that's Fry animated in a single column using the Placid tool to simulate cutout animation. Why not give it a go yourself and see what you can animate using the Plastic tool. And I'll see you next week for another video. And that's a guarantee.